And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Orzov life gain, continuing on our donation decks for today. So the, the two Ds next to the decks means that they're donation decks. These are viewer submitted decks here. And this one looks really fun. So what we have here is we have a kind of half life gain, half vampire deck um, with our vampire theme. We have some Knight of the Ebon Legion, Vampire of the Dire Moon. I'm excited to play this card. I think this is the first time I've actually played this card, and um, and I think it's I think it's a, a solid card that I've been kind of missing out with on a vampire deck. So I'm excited to try it out. And we got some Adanto Vanguards, and then of course Bloodthirsty Aerialist is the card that holds us together. This is the top end of our vampire package, but then also our life gain um, relevance is very important for the Aerialist here, so we can get this thing to be really big um, we have little soren which is good for the vampires but even even if you plus one on a, a creature that's not a vampire you, you're still given that creature death touch and life link so you can still give like your midnight reaper or your splendid angel life link and death touch with a soren so that's pretty nice um and then we got our our angels resplendent angel lyra Dawnbringer, both very strong cards resplendent also cares about gaining life with its ability. Um, and then we have the Ajani Strength of the Pride. This has been a fun card to play so far from what I've uh, experienced with uh, since M20, playing decks with it, this Ajani in it. It's been a fun card to play. We can either gain a lot of life with its plus one, or we can make some Ajani's Pride Mates with the minus two. Either way, we got some good options. And then to top it all off, if you know we're gaining a lot of life, going longer, have a grindier match, we got Command the Dread Horde, bring a lot of things back that shouldn't kill us because we have a whole lot of life. So yeah, this looks like a fun Orzhov mid-range deck to play. So let's get on to it. Let's see how it does. With our half life gain, half vampire. Oh, I guess I didn't claim the prizes from our last league. But yeah, we're doing the traditional constructed queue because this is a donation deck. So we're playing until we either win five or lose two, whichever happens first. And here we go. Wait, cancel. We need uh, we need to switch our avatar. We don't want to be Domri. Together. Let's go with the John. So we can be unstoppable together. <clears throat> yeah, a Johnny Avatar has been giving us better draws. Mm. If we just had like one creature, one of those thorns is a creature. All right, let's give this a try. We haven't found our lucky cat color yet so far. Domri looks like the main character from Sunset Overdrive. I am not familiar with Sunset Overdrive. Is that movie, TV show? Actually, I'm not familiar with that at all. Could be a video game. Could be a one-act play. So y'all are talking about Xbox, right? Is there a thing called the X-Bone? Two people in a row said it was a, a game for X-Bone. Oh, that's how you say Xbox One? Hmm. The Aerialist is probably the most important card in my hands. I 
There you go. Yeah, white black is a really fun color combination. Yeah. Yeah, blue. Yeah, they. These decks almost always have sinister sabotage. Nothing surprising there. This is their ideal curve, though. Cutthroat into Sabotage into Frilled Mystic. That's certainly their ideal curve. Dire Moon is a really good card to take out this cutthroat. But of course, in case of Trickster, I gotta hold the knight back in case of Trickster. Definitely, definitely hope no Trickster. I really want the, van the Dire Moon to be able to trade with the cutthroat. Yeah, I learned something new today. I didn't realize that X-Bone was the name for Xbox One. I learned something new. All right, let's bring in a bunch of removal and discard. I don't want Command the Dread Horde. Problem with the, Do the Dante Vanguard is so bad against Trickster. I'm just going to get rid of that thing. We have to like resolve other creatures and resolve Soren. Maybe we just trim that also. You don't think the spark's good here? No, Night Pack Ambusher is super scary. Card is very good.
All right, I'm gonna trim, like, just kind of trim a little bit of some different top end parts. Sleep. All right, so the plans basically just activate Night of the Ebon Legions until they're dead. See how good how much this plan works or not. But that's the plan. They don't have anything very good against us right now. Hey, Thoreau. Knights are so strong. My power went out yesterday, a little bit after our first league. Uh, power went out for around five hours or so. And so, yeah, I didn't get to play very much. So, y'all are saying I should play Noxious Grasp instead of Dispark. So, it does gain a life. It doesn't cast, cost the white to cast, so I guess it's easier to cast. Like, Ambusher and Frilled Mystic are, like, the only two things to, like, Dispark or Noxious Grasp, right? All right, well, we split the difference. We'll just play one of each, see what happens. And I'm going to get the Cavalier of Night back in instead of the Ajani, I think. And here we go. Does Trickster make Gideon lose, like, indestructible and prevent all damage to it and that kind of stuff? I would just, I would, I guess it, it would, right? I guess, I would think so. Yeah, I would think so. I guess I'd be a little worried about attacking in with... What are they 
we doing? We just played Hinterland. I guess they just did. They probably just, for just forgot that Hinterland Harbor was going to come into play tapped. That was not the card they should have played. So if I attack with Knight of the Ebon Legion, and then they play Trickster, I have to pump the Knight first, and that means I don't get to play something else. But that does keep them from playing the Brineborn, Brineborn Cutthroat, though. So I don't know if that was really worth it or not. I want to try to keep them from playing Night Nightpack Ambusher. I think Resplendent Angel beats Ambusher in general. I think. I suppose we'll see. Oh, gosh, that is so bad. Oh, that is awful. Resplendent Angel doesn't beat two ambushers, I don't think. Well, maybe. Well, no trickster, please. They have no removal. If they have no trickster, no removal, we got them. Because obviously we, we have eight flying in the air and they're at six. Well, that didn't do anything. That doesn't cycle. If I don't play anything, that doesn't cycle. They're, I guess they're just putting a counter on the cutthroat. 
Like this attack puts us to one, but you know we we have them as long as as long as they only have counter spells. You know how often do you want do you want them to only have counter spells? Because that's so that's twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Well, Soren also could could have gotten countered. If if we would have played Soren, like they they could have had a counter spell in hand, and if we played Soren, they could have countered it, and then we would have lost on the spot. Yeah, they could have a spectral sailor, but they they needed like two spectral sailors. They had to have two blockers with us having the extra four four life. All right, Jacques Steampunk with the tier one sub. Thank you so much, Jacques Steampunk. Our opponent did use Trickster whenever they played Trickster. They did. Uh, Cavalier of Night. Two months. Enjoying the content. Thank you so much there, Jock. So I'm number eight on the day. Mountain. Look for land. I don't think it's it's not really ideal to just to play Knight of the Ebon Legion into Mountain. Oh no. Well then. At least we made them use their mount their red source on turn three, not turn turn one when they had it untapped. Uh, they had another one anyway. Five of the last six leagues I played before this was ranked. Kamimi, saying that I never play ranked. I do all the time. The R next to the deck means it's in ranked. We just had rank up Sunday. On Sunday. That's like my Sunday thing is rank up Sunday. But whenever people... You know, donate for like the decks and everything. I I play them through a, a traditional constructed league. So these are all donation decks. So that's what we're doing. It's not like we're playing against like sometimes you get paired against worse decks, but not always. Like you know, we played a very good blue flat blue green flash player last time, and now we're playing this good Boros feather deck. I'm beating them. We're 
removal. All right, Vanguard Midnight Reaper out again. Gideon is only good whenever you're ahead. Legion's landing just being a couple one ones. We're gonna take those out. I'm not playing to spark for an enchantment removal spell because a lot of them are playing the three man enchantment anyway, but we have mortify also. All right. Well, I guess the the big Soren gives all your stuff life link works you know works well with all your cards. Where where the little Soren is only really works well with uh, vampires. And and while we have a good amount of vampires in the deck, it's not the whole deck is not vampires. And so that's why there's only two little Sorens. And three big sorns. This is 30 seconds to Mars. But all you have to do is exclamation point song. Let's get you there. Uh, this is The Kill is the name of the song. All right, we obviously need to find an untapped land here. Ugh. Sorry, Bloodthirsty Aerialist, you're cool. But Double Resplendent Angel with Soren can just outrace whatever they're doing as that ability. Nope, not an untapped land. Good chance they have Reckless Rage, and then my Resplendent Angel will die. The of my sword no, I guess Soren can bring it back, but I want to just—I just want to start with the Soren. I just want to get this thing in play, take it up, kind of see like what they do here. Time for a drink. Use their mana better too. <laughs> You're working up my appetite. a win. Oh no, this, the shot goes back to their hand. That's right. No, it doesn't. No, because it doesn't. They don't target. Shock doesn't go back to their hand. Another feather. <laughs> All right, well, we're looking pretty good here. Be the straw. A land drop would let us go double angel. Like they they're, they're going to have to draw stuff to deal with our angels cuz their hand is nothing. Oh. 
Well, uh, and they did. Ooh, that is perfect. Perfect. Get that thing out of here. Oh, wait, they have Demystify. Crap. Forgot about Demystify. <laughs> uh, your, va your vampire opponents always have Soren on turn three. Man, that's so hard to beat Soren on turn three from the vampire decks, especially if they're putting in Champion of Dusk. They're always going Soren minus, put in Champion of Dusk. That's where it gets really difficult. Man, why'd they have to draw that Reckless Rage? I can't do anything. I know I can't do anything, kitty. Yeah, Demystify is gone, so our next binding <laughs> what a mess I've made. is turned on. If we draw duress, we could maybe duress away Reckless Rage. Do not provoke me. Cool. Vampirism is a useful. Now nah, this trace. is over. I guess I should have played. Resp I guess I'd need to play Resplendent Angel first, but no, we still weren't beating this. Ugh. Our cards just don't do anything. Yeah, they just they just get all these draw. Like they just get to draw so many cards, and none of our cards do anything. Like I could have mortif mortified the feather. But then they just have they just play the other feather and pick up the God's Willing if I do that. And then I really can't win. But now I just have this Legion's End, which is awkward. Yeah, there's one other Ixalan's binding in the deck that could save us. If I would have duressed away the Demystify, they would have just had the God's Willing to be able to protect their creature from Ixalan's binding anyway. This has been just a really awkward game for us, and I think, you know, kind of going through all the different lines that we could do, I think whatever line we go through, our opponent had it covered. Curse you and your progeny! What am I doing with this knight? This knight's not doing anything. I just had everything we had, every every route we could have taken, they had it covered. We, I mean, obviously how it, it needed to work out is we just need our opponent to not draw that Reckless Rage for, like, another couple of turns, let us start turning on the Re Resplendent Angels, but that top deck Reckless Rage was just so perfect. Well, if they're going haste dinosaurs, I need to hold back this vampire.
Um, I would... Memorial to War is budget scape shift hate. I would recommend Field of Ruin much more than Memorial to War. I think Field of Ruin is a much better budget hate card. Defeating you will not bring me pleasure. My bloodline flows through you. Darkness mm. will always return. Fighting tooth and claw is what it friendship soothes the soul. Even another haste regisaur doesn't kill us. Haste Galta kills us though. <laughs> Alright, well it's Haste Galta. So they get so they had to have Galta there that turn, otherwise you know put him on a two turn clock by playing the Ajani. And taking up. Obviously, they had the Haste Galta. Reaper into land wasn't kill him. Um. No, like, if we played Midnight Reaper there, we would have just attacked for five, and then that would have put them down to seven. <clears throat> and we didn't, like, it would have taken us an, an extra an extra turn to kill them. We would not have been able to kill them uh, over, like, just, like, the very next turn. You know, by playing the Ajani, they were dead the very next turn with them needing either Galta or Removal Spell. I only had four mana. I couldn't play Dawnbringer. And and Dawnbringer doesn't give the Aerialist... Like, the Aerialist is not an, an angel, if you're thinking that... Like, Lyra doesn't pump up the Aerialist at all. They, they weren't dead the next turn unless I played a Johnny. No, Resplendent Angel only spawns a 4-4 whenever you gain 4 life. We weren't gaining 4 life there. We were just attacking. Our Aerialist didn't have lifelink anymore. We're still dead in that scenario of Reaper, block 7 damage, die, draw a card, you draw a land, you play Lyra, the block 7 damage, and gains 5 life. 
or you know, it blocks five and gains five. We're still dead because that's that's two turns of them attacking with that Galta, and we don't have them dead in that in that turn. Yeah, our aerialists did not have lifelink anymore. Oh, I meant to attack with that aerialist in the air. Whoops. Now, I'll sit back for a turn. even a good attack and I just have a bunch of three I have like two three I guess I'm at ten what are they're gonna have like seven six they got like carnage tyrant because even if they just like attack out here like if they play like another Regisaur alpha and attack I think I'm just going to sit back and, and wait till I have Resplendent Angel next turn. No, I didn't. I don't want to block with the Vampire on, on the 12 12 because then they could just have another Galta and then, like, you know, it tramples over for 11 and then another Galta puts me in so much trouble. Oh, I have to play this thing first. I have to play the Bloodthirsty Aerialist first, right? It's not like Resplendent Angel. I'm just so used to playing Resplendent in, in Lyra. And you play Resplendent later. Binding is certainly the way to go. Just making sure they're not getting another Galta out there. Right, so this, this should be a 3-4. I messed that up. Obviously, Legion's End is very good against Huntmaster, but that seems like about it in their deck. Is Le Maybe that's still better than Midnight Reaper, though. Midnight Reaper is not a card I really want to see at all. Legion's End may be dead, though, depending on what our opponent has. I like... I've been liking this 1-mana, one 1-1 one Death Touch Lifelink creature, though. I've liked that card. <laughs> Remember in history class when we learned that God sent, sent down his angels to extinct the dinosaurs. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's what history class is saying. It's a great card, but it's not a land. See the the reason oh okay the reason why I didn't really want to play that there is because I thought they they may have like a cast down or something that I just I just turned on like their two mana play. 
We get a target for Legion's End. What else you got in here? Any more Marauders? No. Rotting, Regisaur, Galta, Flame Sweep. We did have Cast Down. I just can't kill this stupid Rotting Regisaur with anything. Green or white, that's red and black. This is CMC4 or more. Cool, I can kill that thing. Not playing Knight of the Ebon Legion, of course, because of Flame Sweep. Um. I am so surprised they let me block that. And they're not even cast downing the angel either. No, I think they knew that the I mean that's the third that's the third game in a row we played the vampire. I'm pretty sure they knew that it had death touch. So I don't, yeah, they, I could have waited for them to like tap and give the Galta haste, but I don't want, um, I also don't want, um, I don't want the Marauding Raptor to be a 4-3. Man, if we draw a land, this is going to be an insane turn if we draw a land. So if we draw a land, we get to play Soren, minus, get back Resplendent Angel, attack for six, gain six. Darn. Well, that insane turn is off the table now. No, Meister, I, I never did. That was not ideal. Wish I would have just kept up these. That was a bad card for me to see. Uh, 
Good game. Yeah, we're 25 land deck. Just never, never drew a land. Yeah, I guess playing the vampire ended up being wrong. That was really unfortunate. I didn't get that, to draw that fourth land. So, of course, my thinking with playing the vampire is that gets us five power so that playing Soren the next turn, you know, gets us two, um, gets us two angels. With, uh, that would have gave us two angels with resplendent. Because, of course, I was going to be going Soren minus, get back another resplendent angel. So that, you know, that was just like the worst possible scenario was us, was them having Ripjaw Raptor and then drawing into Colossus also. And that was a terrible scenario for us. Um, but yeah, it's a 25 land deck. It was just really, really unlucky there. And that even, we even had like the temple earlier that we scryed a non land to the bottom. What's up, Big T? So uh, that was a that was a kind of match that um, I was pretty unlucky to lose. Thought we had a really good chance of winning that, uh, especially you know like later on in the game. It turns out that that last turn, if I don't play Aerialist, I would have had to Spark Mortify for the Ripjaw Raptor, and life would have certainly been better. But oh well. Card, anything, like, so changes with the deck. I don't really like the Legion's Landing. I would, I would rather have just more impactful two drops. Like, Legion's, like, we're not, we're not re really going wide with this deck. So, I don't really like the Legion. I'd rather just play more Adanto Vanguards or Tithe Takers or a Johnny's Pride Mates. I would want any, any of those cards over Legion's Landing. I don't. I don't know if Cavalier of Night was really that, is really that, imp like, hmm. The like Cavalier of Night just kind of costs a lot of mana. I think that, like, just in the main deck, this deck needs removal. Like, we just, we don't have removal in the main deck, and I think that's a, that's a, not a good, I don't think that's a, a very good design. I think we need interaction in the main deck. I would, I mean, I guess Cavalier of Night's technically removal, but that costs so much mana, and we'd have to sacrifice something here. Um, no, I wouldn't play Bantu. I'd rather have Cavalier of Night than Bantu, but I would I would recommend taking out Cavalier of Night and taking out Gideon, and having removal spells in the main deck. There's you know lots of things to play. Cast down. Um, I I would I'd want to focus on the two mana slot because our three mana slot has a lot. So I wouldn't I don't think I'd want like Oath of Kaya main deck, but. But cards like like cast like maybe just like get like three cast downs instead of like Cavalier Knights and Gideon. Hey, Alid. A lead? It's probably a lead. Thank you so much for that sub. That is sub number ten. That's our first sub goal, so that means it's time to crack a pack. Uh, Dawn of Hope is way too slow. Um oh, thank you so much, Aled. Long time watcher, first time subscriber. Well, I really, really appreciate that. Um, so basically we're looking at... Baffling End is another good choice besides Cast Down, but I think I like Cast Down. So like Cast Down instead of like these things, and then Legion's Landing, get, get something else in here. Maybe Vanguard or Pride Mate or Tithe Taker. Something else like that. Vanguard makes her Soren better. Um... But maybe just get like a couple pride mates or, or you know some something else there, or tithe taker. I don't I don't know exactly which what you want there with the two drop slot pride mate tithe taker or vanguard, but something else there. Um. But that that starts making the deck look a little cleaner. I think Midnight Reaper is perfectly fine. I don't I don't dislike Midnight Reaper. It's it's like we were playing like some aggressive decks where Midnight Reaper isn't very good, but it's it's good again. It's a good card to have against a lot of control decks. It works really well with Soren. I don't dislike having Midnight Reaper. 
Our threes are heavy. That is true. Because Aerialist and, and Resplendent Angel are awesome. Those are very good. The the more you move towards, like, moving towards Primate does make the gain life uh, more valuable. But I did like the temples. The, the scrying was really nice with the temples. I did like that. I was really impressed with Vampire of the Dire Moon. Really impressed with this card. I I definitely need to put this not only in Vampires, but I have, I have like, an, an Orzhov... Let's just say this for now. The, uh, in a Johnny's Pride deck, we've played twice so far. And with this deck, I haven't been super impressed with, like, you know, like this this tries to go heavier on the, the life gain aspect with the, those and has, like, Othakaya. But, it, like, these, these one drops aren't necessarily the best all the time. And I think that I, I definitely think I should be playing that Death Touch Life Linker. That card's just just really good. Should be playing that card. Um, and I think I should be playing it in Vampires instead of Vicious Conquistador. Um, besides that, our sideboard felt fine, honestly. I kind of like what our sideboard has going on. Yeah, sideboard felt fine. I think I would kind of try it again with getting some 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 like other like good removal in the main deck, and again, either primates or vanguards for this Soren. I'm not even sure if like you're supposed to be this Soren if you're supposed to be playing this card. Not exactly sure, but tithe taker, pride mate, something something else there, uh, in the or more vanguard something here. If you don't want pride mates, get more vanguards or tithe takers. Okay. Uh, no, I wouldn't go down to 24 lands, no. As we saw that last game, we didn't hit land... Like, you need to hit land drops with this deck. Like, you need to hit, like, five land drops still. Like, Resplendent Angel rewards you for hitting land drops and everything. I, I would not cut down on lands. And especially how you're playing the temples. Temples make it easier to play more lands because uh, you can just put lands to the bottom with your temples. But your deck's going to be a little slower with the temples, so you do want, like, the more lands. Like, it's... it's if you're... If you're going on one... If you're hedging one way or the other when you're playing temples of like less lands or more lands when you're playing less lands uh <clears throat> playing less lands and having like a basically how do i say it? the temples slow you down so when you're playing a slower deck you would, you would prefer to have more lands uh in the slower deck where you can like um aggressively bottom land uh lands but you know that you're going to be hitting your land drops where if you're going with a lower land count, you're you're not going to want to be a, a slower deck with a lower land count, just kind of in general. I don't know. I don't know if any of that makes sense. <clears throat> Hopefully it did. Anyway, that's our Orzov life gain deck here. Um, played pretty well. Had some some really good aspects that I liked. Aerialist was definitely strong, but yeah, that Vampire of the Dire Moon was an impressive card. And I really like how it costs one mana... Both of these cards, I really like how these cards cost one mana for bringing them back with the Vengeful Bloodlord, where you can still have the Vengeful Bloodlord have a good amount of loyalty and maybe bring them back multiple times. Um, yeah, it was fun. It was, this is a good, fun deck to play. I liked it. All right, so that's that's it for our deck. If you're watching later on YouTube, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. But thank you so much for watching Orzov Life Gain here, and I will see you for the next video.